Welcome back to class. We would like to derive one theoretical model where aggregate demand and aggregate supply play a role and which can be used uh, to explain fluctuations in the business cycle. In this part, like in 10.3, we talk about the aggregate demand relationship. The aggregate demand relationship is the relationship between the quantity of output demanded and the aggregate price level. In detail, we'll talk about uh, this phenomenon in chapters 11, 12, and 13. But here in chapter 10, we'll make a shortcut and we will rely on the quantity equation and derive a simple, although incomplete, aggregate demand curve. In equation one, we have once more the quantity equation on the left hand side, money supply times velocity, and on the right hand side, price times the output or goods demand Y. In the long run, it is the case that an increase in money supply also leads to an increase in prices. However, in the short run, we just learned that the prices are sticky. Which of the other variables which are there in the quantity equation will adjust in the short run? Let's assume that money supply and the velocity are constant, so that the left-hand side of the quantity equation is constant. And this implies that also the right-hand side has to be constant. So this product, P times Y, has to be constant. This implies that when price levels increase, then the demand for goods Y has to decrease. You can see it here in equation three, when the left-hand side of the equation is constant and the price levels increase, then the Y variable has to decrease. On this slide, we, of course, talk about this relationship in a strictly mathematical matter. So in case that the left-hand side is constant, it has to be the case that the right-hand side is constant, but we don't have an economic intuition. We'll come to the economic intuition in a minute. Nevertheless, the right-hand side, this relationship implies that the aggregate demand curve is downward sloping. So when the price level increases, it is the case that the output has to decrease. Negative relationship between price level and output level. What about the economic intuition? Here we can argue as follows that when the price level rises, each transaction requires more dollars so that the number of transactions and thus the quantity of goods and services purchased has to fall. In case that the price level is lower, then a given level of nominal money supply M allows a greater volume of transactions, which means a greater quantity of output is demanded. This is the intuition behind this uh, aggregate demand relationship. This is the intuition why the demand curve has a negative slope. Let's talk about shifts in the aggregate demand curve. When does the aggregate demand curve shift? The aggregate demand curve will shift in case that money supply changes or in case that the velocity changes. So in case that money supply decreases or in case that the velocity decreases, the aggregate demand curve will shift to the left. In case that money supply increases or the velocity increases, then the aggregate demand curve will shift to the right. In 10.3, we talked about the aggregate demand relationship. Let's talk about the aggregate supply relationship. And there it is a case that we will derive two different aggregate supply curves, a long run version and one curve which holds also in the short run. Let's switch in the beginning to the long run version because we are already familiar with a classical model.
In the a classical model, we assume that the amount of capital and the amount of labor with it, which is present in one economy determine the GDP level. This GDP level does not depend on the price level. It is independent of the price level and therefore the long run aggregate supply curve is a vertical line in this price output diagram. We can already use this long run version to derive long run insights. So for example, in case that the aggregate demand curve shifts to the left, it will lead to a decrease in prices. But what can cause a shift of the aggregate demand curve to the left? Like we talked about that already, that for example, a decrease in money supply leads to a shift of the aggregate demand curve to the left. In the long run, also the price level decreases, which is completely in line with our quantity relationship, with our quantity equation, a decrease in money supply leads in the long run to a decrease of the price level. Let's talk about the short run aggregate supply curve. Let's assume that all firms have issued price catalogs and it is too costly for them to issue new ones in case that new information arrive. So all prices are stuck at the predetermined level. Let us also assume that at these prices, the firms are willing to sell as much as their customers are willing to buy, as much as the customers are willing to demand, and the companies are hiring just enough labor to produce this amount which is demanded. In this scenario, it will be the case that the short-run aggregate supply curve will be a horizontal line. It will be horizontal because the prices are fixed and the companies are producing that amount of output which is demanded. In the next step, we can bring the short run demand curve and the aggregate demand curve together and can think about what happens if a negative demand shock hits this economy. In case that the negative demand shock hits this economy, then in the short run, it will be the case that GDP is lower than before. We start in the initial equilibrium A, where demand is equal to supply. Then the negative demand shock hits the economy. The aggregate demand curve shifts to the left. And then it is the case that the prices do not adjust. The prices in A and B are the same. Price adjustment does not take place. And due to the fact that uh, the demand is lower than before, the companies also adjust the output. And therefore, it is the case that the companies are hiring less labor than before. So labor demand in B is smaller than labor demand in A. And this implies that the unemployment rate in B is higher than the unemployment rate in A. The economy is in a recession. So for the first time, we are able to explain why it comes to a recession. And the reason is a fall in aggregate demand. Let's try to combine the short run and the long run. What happens in the long run? Over a longer period of time, prices are flexible, the aggregate supply curve is vertical, and changes in aggregate demand affect the price level, but not the output. Over short periods of time, prices are sticky, the aggregate supply curve is flat, and changes in aggregate demand do not affect the price level, but affect the output of goods and services. In this graph, we have a combination of the short run and the long run version of this model. So in the short run, the horizontal aggregate supply curve is valid. And in the long run, the vertical aggregate supply curve is valid.
We can use this relationship now in order to discuss some shocks. What happens if the economy experiences a negative demand shock? When a negative demand shock arrives, then the aggregate demand curve shifts to the left. And in the short run, the economy um, develops from A to B. So the companies are reducing the output because of the fact that the demand is lower. The companies are reducing production so that the economy ends up uh, in a recession in part in point B and the unemployment rate increases. When the unemployment rate increases over time, it will be the case that wages adjust, like nominal wages adjust, normal wages decrease because the realized unemployment rate is higher than the natural level of unemployment. And this leads to a decrease of wages. When the wages decrease, one important cost factor on the side of the companies will decrease and the companies start to decrease prices. When prices start to decrease, the economy develops from point B to point C, because when the prices decrease, then demand for goods will pick up again. And in the end, the shock is digested in point C. The GDP level is on the same level as before, like the pre-crisis level A is once more reached, but the goods prices are lower than before. In chapter 10.5, we talk about some stabilization policies. Is it possible that the central bank can react in case that there is a positive or a negative shock? Let's discuss a shock where the velocity of money increases, which can be classified as a positive demand shock. Starting point is point A. The economy is in an equilibrium, but then the velocity increases and the demand curve shifts to the right. In the short run, the economy ends up in a boom. In point B, GDP is higher than the normal level. And uh, this implies that the unemployment rate is lower than the natural rate of unemployment. Over time, uh, this will lead to an increase in wages, nominal wages increase, and this uh, leads to a cost push on the side of the companies because of the fact that labor is one important ingredient in the production process. When the wages increase, then the companies will also start to raise prices so that over time prices increase and when prices increase, the quantity demanded will decrease again. So over time, the economy will develop from point A uh, to point C. One big question is whether the central bank can do something and influence this adjustment process. And in case that we talk about a demand shock here, there is indeed the possibility that the central bank can influence this kind of adjustment process. What should the central bank do in case that the velocity increases and the demand curve shifts to the right so that the economy ends up in a boom, which will lead uh, to higher inflation rates in the medium run, then one idea is that the central bank shifts the aggregate demand curve back into point A. When the velocity of money increases, one idea could be that the central bank performs a contractionary monetary policy and decreases money supply. Then, like for one second, the aggregate demand curve would shift to the right because the velocity increases. But when the central bank reacts really fast, the central bank can shift the aggregate demand curve back into point A by decreasing money supply. So a good policy response and a stabilization policy 
is when velocity increases, the central bank should decrease money supply. Until now, we talked about demand shock. We can also talk about some supply shocks. And here, the textbook is not very specific and is not very clear because the textbook does not distinguish whether a supply shock is only temporary or permanent. So, for example, when there is a bad harvest, then the, this could be modeled as only a temporary supply shock because one year later there will be a new harvest and it might be the case that the agricultural sector is back on track. So a bad harvest due to, due to bad weather is only a temporary supply shock. Oil price shock, here we also have to differentiate whether it's only temporary, temporary or a permanent oil price shock. We can also um, have a positive supply shock in case that innovations change the production process and with a given amount of capital and a given amount of labor, the economy can produce a higher amount of output. This would be a positive supply shock. A negative supply shock is when the earthquake destroys the capital stock. So the earthquake destroys 50% of the production capacity because of the fact that some factories are destroyed completely. This would be also like a permanent shock, which will affect the economy also in the medium or longer run. More aggressive labor unions could also bargain for a higher real wage. This could lead to a higher natural rate of unemployment. And this could be also a permanent supply shock. Let's have a look how this shock is digested. Um, it is the case that the short run aggregate supply curve shifts upwards. But I want to argue here that also the long run aggregate supply curve shifts to the left in case that one earthquake destroys like 50% of the production capacity. We can see here in the graph that this shock will lead to an upward pressure in prices prices increase. Why is that? Like right after the earthquake took place, it is the case that supply is lower than before. Supply is lower while demand is still on the level A. And when demand is larger than supply, this leads to an upward pressure, which increases the prices in the adjustment process. In the end, it will be the case that the prices are higher than before. This will also decrease demand to the new level. And this level is lower than before. So in chapter 10, we get to know a new model, aggregate demand and aggregate supply. And this model is good to explain short term fluctuations in the business cycle short-term fluctuations of output and unemployment. This is the end of the second video. Have a nice day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.